half. There's some new faces who, uh, I'm not sure if you've ever seen me tea, I don't recognize you guys, but if you've ever seen me in front of the room, and probably I don't know everyone, then you guys don't know each other. So we're gonna do a quick round robin of who you are, uh, whether you wanna tell me personally or professionally, I don't care. More specifically, why are you here? What, would, what made this three hours worth your schedule today? 12 to three. And then Climber comes in and kicks us out at 3 o'clock. So 3 in the dot, we're out of here. Command starts. Is that what it is? Command? I thought it was Climber. Okay. <coughs> and I have 3.30 showing, so I'm out of here. Uh, so, kick us off, Trish. Hello. Who are you, for those of you who don't know you, and why are you here? What do you want? Yeah, sorry, I have my new players in the car. Hi, I'm Trisha Toko. Um, I've been with Heather Williams. It'll be four years this October. Um, I'm here to just plan my business for the next coming year. I haven't been so So you think in 2020? Yeah. Okay. This will be a, a lot of uh, second half. It, it'll apply to 2020. Well, it would help if I just finish out 2019 as well. Well, that's what we're doing. <laughs> but when you think about it, no matter when you start, you have fiscal year, calendar year. So we can say the next 12 months. Right. Right? So that's why. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess, the, thank you for that. This will help me. How many of you... You have no business plan written. This will be the first time you actually do a business plan at least for the current or upcoming year. Be proud, because you're here. Okay, so four or five. How many of you have one that you wrote and you were super proud of it when you wrote it and then you forgot it existed because you haven't looked at it since? The other five. Uh, and then, so who did not raise their hand? Either of you two did not raise your hand. Tell me about where you guys are at with your, you wrote it, you're looking at it. What is this going to do for you? I just, I just updated it. I'm here because Darlene told me I had to come. <laughs> <laughs> what does Darlene want you to get out of this class today? <laughs> <laughs> and she says Chick-fil-A, damn it. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Plan this. Plan this. Plan this. Plan this. Okay, so not sure yet. I better know there's something. always some reason. Yeah. Thank you. And Cindy? Um, Darlene? No, no. Yeah. I, I know I'm behind. And um, I just think this will be a great um, recharge. Okay. Yes. Good. And you mentioned you've written one as well? Nope. She takes it back. So she, I said who didn't raise her hand. She said there. But then you should have raised your hand. No, I don't have one at all. Perfect. So that would have been the option A. Don't have that one. Um, okay. This helps. And then, so I, want, I do want to know names, and I'll, I'll forget half of them. I apologize. So we'll do quick rapid fire so we can all reference and, and talk. Uh, just tell me, Debbie, then uh, kind of like your little business profile, your five second business profile. Okay, um, Debbie Jones, been here four years, um, in business four years, almost four years. Um, I am almost to the halfway point for my goal for this year, so I'm excited about that. I realized okay. yesterday was a little bit of a lie because I kept saying 24 okay. was my goal, and it was actually 26. I went back and said, well, crap. Okay, so. <laughs> So that's, a, I'm going to ask that then. Perfect. It's halftime. Yep. Are you winning or losing the, the game? I'm, so you're, you're almost tied. Almost at, at the half point. Perfect. So, yep. I've lost significantly. Okay, so you're like down 28 nothing. Um, I'm going to come out to say 100 nothing. <laughs> okay. I'm Carrie Keeling, brand new agent. Uh, so yeah, I'm just getting started. Game starting for you. Perfect. So this is this is the beginning. Good place to be. Good room. DB team, how are you guys doing on your, your score? Well, I mean, I guess if you look at it, it's about six more months. I I'm, I am about halfway there. Okay. So, but, you know, it feels like. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking at my pipeline. Okay. Well, good. We're going to talk about pipeline, how it came from there. And we're down for the year. Okay. And um, just compared to goal or compared to last year? Compared to the goal. Okay. But we're pretty even with last year. Okay. But down for the goal. Cool. And so we need some adjustments in the little goal. <laughs> Sweet! <laughs> they all it's a, there's really? a lot of travel. Yeah, it's, it's like if they change the basketball hoops to eight foot, I'd be a pretty good player. <laughs> 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 well, that can be arranged. Perfect. And I married Pat Vasquez, um, 2015 team, so four years, can't count. Um, I, luckily, I have done this in the past because when we were writing it up, family issues came up and I have a half a business plan, not a full business plan, and then plus, again, first half of the year, so I'm actually halfway to my goal. Okay. 
Um, so, but I've definitely mentally been out of the game, so I need to refocus and maybe finish the end of the year just as strong as the beginning of the year. So I have a key to momentum going. To restart the momentum. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Good. Yes. I'm Chris Atkins, um, brand new to Keller Williams, but I've been an agent for a few years, and yeah, my broker didn't have any goal setting or anything, so that's well, what I'm here now. Welcome. Yeah. 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 Like this team, my whole time. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so right now, your dual career? Teacher. Okay. Ooh, awesome. Happy summer. Thank you. Thank you. It's a hard job. Yeah. Yeah. Through the front and zoom back. I'm Joey Bruno, and I'm most of you guys. I'm on the Wartella squad. Um, I've been in real estate for two years and <coughs> hoping to just get learn different like tracking methods, I guess, to track the business. And it's been cool to see us grow. Yeah. From like a consistent like like three to four closings a month and now we're in like the I think we'll have seven in July. So it's cool to see us. Grow. It works. Good, love it. I'm Alex Zinsky, and what I want to get out of this is kind of how to start Tabitha's business and mine together uh, in Clearwater when we move over there. It's really excited. Um, and I got my third one under contract. So I was nice. nice. Alex. How many of you, not named them, have a Clearwater referral source? Oh, yeah. We do now. We do now. <laughs> we do now. Oh, sorry. Okay. Well, you that becomes a huge point for you guys. Yeah. There's no Working reason on. anyone else in that office should get any run of referrals from this office. So, yeah. definitely. Please. I would love this trap on all day. Um, perfect. It's being here. Miss? Uh, my name is Luchi Sotomayor. I'm new in this office. I've been in real estate for a long time, but in West Palm Beach. I was out of country for three years. Uh, this is part of my main business plan, but I, now I think I have to make another business plan <laughs> for this purpose. What do you mean another? Where's your first business plan? Um, we're real estate investors, my husband and me. Okay. He's a builder. Okay. And I've been in sales, you know, I'm searching and researching. Yep. We work together Okay. for 35 years. Yeah, you see, so you have two different business entities. You need to and we have plans. a business plan for everything in our back, you know. And real estate and uh, I have the business plan for the whole thing but uh, I think I have my own goals now in this okay and let it, my main thing now is learn and learning a lot first time in a office like this learn so for started, and today I got my first listing all right, all right. for everyone here learn to do don't learn to know don't leave this room and be smarter and be equally as unproductive as you were yesterday so learn to do, because everyone loves to learn, yet when you Implement. you don't change your behavior, then cool, you're smart and broke, right? So <laughs> learn to do. Thank you for being here. Do for everything Alex said. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm Mason Dahl. Um, like Carrie, I'm brand new to the whole thing. So just trying to learn. Sponging it up. Yeah. Perfect. Cynthia Lipke, you've been here a year as of June, and I'm one of those people, I don't watch the numbers, I just, you know, I think I've sold about 3.3 million. How much? 3.3 million. Year to date? And um, my goal was 36 houses, which I've never done, and I'm only at 14, so I know I need to get on it. Okay. So 14, if you were equally pacing, you'd be at 18, which was slightly behind. So for you to make up, you've got to hit 22. Q3, Q4. That's all. <laughs> Easy piece. Sure. Sir? Um, Will Cobble, I'm a new agent. Uh, just here trying to get started. All right. Vincent? Uh, Vincent Arms, I've been here two years. Um, so like forever. Yes, yeah, so like forever. <laughs> just two years, like the last one. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Happy anniversary. Thank you. Um, my goal, really, is I'm all about the numbers. And um, as far as, <laughs> as you know, doing stuff, oh, no. I'm still working on still <laughs> Seriously, I mean, we used to talk about who Ben Kenny was. I didn't know this guy. And so I looked at the report. I'm like, wow, his name's always number one on the, the national report. Yeah. And it ended up $4 million for the first part of the year, as you said. It's all that type of stuff and being more purposeful. And I'm happy kind of what I've achieved over last year. If you look backwards, but if you look forward, I'm like, I want to get to like $5 million this year. I've done almost two. So it's a big okay. stretch now. Good. 
Thanks for being here. So we're going we're gonna to figure out how do you make that adjustment to get a five. Good. Good. Ms. Pope? I'm Rachel. Um, November, October will be five years. So I'm behind on my unit goal, but ahead on my GCI goal. Nice. Uh, That's a good point. Yeah, right? Yeah, right? Um, everyone is like, ooh, yay, I want that. Yeah. Yeah, how do you feel about that, Rachel? Oh, I don't like it. I mean, it's great to see the money, but I'm, I'm not winning. I don't like the lease, so. Well, that's the mentality I want everyone to adopt, is she's going, it's almost like, you. if we were, if we're analogize the, the football game, she didn't win, the other team lost, right? Thank goodness they fumbled it on the one yard line and gave us the easy touchdown, so we won. Thank goodness our price point is carrying me over from a volume standpoint, yet we're not doing what we've got to do to go out there and win the unit game. So adopt that mindset because what we can control is units. The gift is price point. So my price point right now, my average is, is 410. That was nowhere near my business planning. My business planning was 300. And so I'm getting a $110,000 volume bonus so far. I don't expect that to continue, and if it does, it's a blessing. I'm going to expect what the averages are showing from an aggregate. So just keep in mind, if, if you are ahead, it's kind of like when we look at the numbers at the monthly team meeting. If the board is, is down 5%, we're down 2 Yeah, we can celebrate a little bit because we're outpacing the board, yet we're going, there's more that we can do. We're not reaching that potential. So a little bit of, it was a huge kudos, congrats, but also adopt a little bit of our mindset of going, I set out a number, I need to hit that number. Because if it was opposite in one, two, three, four years from now, and it's down, then she'd be really sucking wind because not only would units be down, the market would also be down. So we never want to be okay with riding a pedal wave up. Well, and I will just, I'll do better than last year. Like that's 100% guaranteed, but it's awesome. not anymore for sure. Well, and I love that, you know, I, I guess the goal and the assumption for most people in this room is we're going to do better than last year every year for as long as we're in real estate. Uh, otherwise, you've peaked, you've made it, you're done. And that's, that's okay for some, yet I imagine most people in this room says, I could probably do more. There's probably something I'd like to fulfill in my life financially or an experience to create or a debt to get rid of or a retirement to seek, right? So there's, there's always more. So thanks for that. Miss? Sylvia. Hi there. Um, Sylvia? Sylvia. Welcome, thank you. I started in um, April this year uh, with class, Ignite class, and I just had my first closing Monday. I saw the little film rain. Yeah. It was good. Ooh. Congratulations. She made me do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm here because I, I want to learn how to be organized and plan better so I can be able to be like all you guys folks that mm -hmm. have all these Alrighty. controls. Good. It's really good. Awesome. Thank you. This is my friend Margaret. Hi, Margaret. <laughs> Okay, so I'm new here, so I just built for four years ago, but I think it's really to do more for this, this company. <laughs> okay, good. You're not here yet? No. Oh, well, thanks for coming as a guest. Very good. What's up, man? Hey, how you doing, Bob? I'm good. What's going on with you? Just teaching class. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for you to introduce yourself. Um, my name is Jonathan. I started couple, I want to say about a month ago. I uh, just started my night classes two weeks ago. Uh, almost done with that and just looking forward to the future and just putting in my work and, you know, paying my dues. Right on. Good All right, got a couple late stragglers. Who did we miss? Deborah, happy birthday belated. Thank you. What do you want out of the day? Why are you here? Why am I here? Uh-huh. Um, to learn something special from you to get this <laughs> second half of my year kicking strong. Because yes, we are always in a positive direction. And since I'm not going to reach my original goal, I'm cutting down my goal. I'm still going to be higher than last year. It's just to learn at least one thing from your class of what to do okay. and focus on that possibly I'm not going to have. Perfect. Thank you. What else do you want to say hi? Oh, hi. I know most of you. I'm Kara. I'm Agent Services Coordinator in our office. Um, here it is. So all the information that when you need help with your business planning, and we go on to the next few steps. I can 
be the best resource for you. And on a calendar, there's two follow-up to this session, which is a little bit of workshop, because we're taking an eight-hour curriculum to about three hours. So there's gonna be a lot of, okay, do this later. And she's gonna hold some workshop study shops. So if you need that environment or assistance or accountability, keep an eye out for where she's doing that. Perfect. Chris Brooms, Keller Williams, uh, been here about five years. Uh, what was the other question? Uh, why are you here? Why am I here? Um, just want to absorb, learn as much as I can, and mess up around with the life around the future. So, try out. I'll be the best. All right, here's one. Here's one. All right. Um, we're fond of you. Been uh, agent here for about four or five months. Um, I need help with business planning, but what confirmed is Rick actually had a video yesterday that confirmed what kind of fee, what this is going to be about, and so that kind of. Sweet. All right. All right. Well, we're going to dive in. Everyone has content, right? Everyone's got their form, their packet. Yes. Anyone not have it? Uh, can I do a housekeeping real quick? Sure. We have a sponsor, Brian from Pillar to Post, who's coming in. He's bringing lunch. Chick fil A was running behind. So I'm just going to like set it up in the back so if people cannot all at the same time interrupt what Rick is doing, but as you get hungry, you can eat it. Sandwiches or nuggets? Must be like nuggets, wraps, and salad. All right, save me some nuggets so I can teach. Right. So I have a sandwich that's I can't do that. Okay. Well, let's jump in uh, again. We're gonna we're gonna power through some of this. Essentially, it's broken down into six chapters, which is the intro, the four models, and then an action plan. Uh, a little bit about what we're gonna have is um, discuss and analyze Annie the agent. So some real life samples with Annie. We're gonna talk about some some workshops to see if we're implementing it well. Uh, your own version, so what we, what Annie does, how can you apply it to be applicable to your world and your goals. Uh, the pro tips and then the business plan to, to stay profitable in 19. Profit is a word I'm going to keep revisiting. No one ever gives awards for profit because we can't track their own P&L. Frankly, most agents don't track their own P&L. Uh, so a goal that I would love is if everyone here actually had a P&L, because if you make all the money in the world and you spend it all as well and you have little to no profit, that's a lot of volunteer work you're doing. So uh, minding your profit, and actually what I find more often than not is agents are not spending too much, they're not spending enough. What do I mean by that? Reinvesting in their business, whether through lead gen or through leverage. Those are the two biggest pillars, we'll dive into that in the budget model. Yet if you don't have a P&L, you don't actually know how much money you're reinvesting back in your business. How can you quantify your growth pattern? How can you quantify your ROI? Um, and, and these days, there's so much just virtual help that you can give someone all of your, your DAs and your closings, and they'll just give you a P&L in their mind. It's a beautiful thing. Yes, can I plug his wife? His wife will do it for you. <laughs> Heather Powell will do the P&L for you. Oh, your Heather's house. Okay, that's, that's your face. That's what I just thought, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's like I've seen around the office. Perfect. Cobblestone Solutions. Transaction yep. coordination and quick Sorry. That's good. Have a blogger. And who has a class later this month? Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think most of you know me, some of you don't. So I am an agent on that corner. I share it with Jane Cannon. As a, she's a mentor. I'm the roommate. Uh, I've been a team leader two different market centers, including this last two years. Uh, Full time realtor now. Investor in four different offices. So this one, Waterford Lake, Spring Hill, Gainesville. Uh, I'll be an approved trainer. I've been involved 14 times. That's count going up. Still in coaching. One thing I committed to myself was uh, I got to where I was at through coaching. So day one was zero pipeline. I said, I'm getting a master coach. I've had to coach my, my career here. Uh, and then I'm in KWYP. Those of you who want more information on that, that's the networking of Keller Williams Young Professionals in pretty strong Orlando chapter. So if you are under the age of 40, then we can do that. And can be a can instructor, which is um, a, a great, just kind of almost philanthropy to help teach the young adults about wisdom and life and choices, that sort of thing. So that's my quick resume. Uh, this is where you can find me and follow up with me. Uh, I've got two podcasts that record now, so I'm going to launch a little bit of a podcast and teaching this stuff audibly. Uh, so I'll have six personal perspectives I'll be teaching out. So. Love for you guys to, to keep track of that. I do travel the state teaching this stuff, so this is a part of my legion, which is why that profile is there to an agent to agent for. Enough about me, into the course. Let's jump in. So before you can earn a million, you've got to think a think like a millionaire real estate agent. 
Um, so these are going to be the chapters we're going to go into. Think a million, economic, region, budget, organization, and goal setting. And we're going to spend most of our time in these two because this is the most customizable and immediate and I think the most applicable, applicable for most of this room. These two will not be uh, as deep because this is frankly a template you need to rip off and duplicate it. Uh, and the org chart, looking at the room, is probably not applicable for a lot of people here yet. Uh, and if it is, we can talk about offline. And then goal setting, we're going to go over there. <clears throat> sort of think like a millionaire. A millionaire real estate agent. How many of you guys would like to, or not even would like to, how many of you foresee that sometime in your career you will grow a million? About half the room. Hesitant, a little bit. Uh, and some, it's okay if not, because that's not easy, nor is it always fun. Uh, and some people are like, no, nah, I'm good with a half mil. Cool half mil, I'm good, right? Yet if you desire to grow a million, and that would be a net of about 350,000, maybe 400,000, then you can do it. Because if some Yahoos who do it across the country can do it, then everyone here can do it. Uh, netting a million, anyone for a, I don't have candy, Jim or Gene brought out the candy yesterday. If you wanted to net a million per the model, what does the book say you should be grossing if you wanted to net a million? Net a million. 2.5? Close, that's close. So, uh, and we'll go into that a little bit. So, thinking like a millionaire, and if you guys are have going, no, I don't think I want to think like, then think like a half a millionaire, think like a quarter millionaire, think like a hundred thousand. Whatever your someday goal is for your career, you will never do it if you can't envision yourself doing it, if you can't think that way, which goes back to my favorite bold law of be you have. You'll never have the business you desire if you're not doing or being what that person would do or be. Does that make sense? Okay. We're talking about some myth understandings. It's not a lisp I have. It does say myth, not miss. <laughs> Misunderstandings. And we think like a million of it. Okay, so here's a stable foundation. Now, this is brand new material. It was written, rewritten here in 2019. So a lot of this, this was written from MREA 2.0. This is MREA 2.1, which the research was done in the late 90s and was published in 2002. Most of it is still very, very relevant. Some of it has adjusted. So if you see some things that are repeated, it's because it still holds true. If you see some things that change, it's because technology changes things. Uh, so who can describe this model, what we're looking at here? Who can describe this chart? What does this mean? Go back? I think I can. I hope I can. Uh, when you have models, it becomes, everything becomes systemized, and it frees you up to be more creative. Versus if you're creative, you're just sort of winging things all over the place, and therefore you need models to help you get to the stable. Yeah, not agree with that. Well, the models are proven results, they're proven systems. Someone else has already done it, they've already figured it out, they've already failed, they said, here's your model. If we think about building houses, there's model homes, right? And you have maybe have four or five floor plans, then development, those are the models. And then you go to the design center. What do you get to be? Creative. You don't go first to the creativity and then go pick out the model. You pick out the model first, and that's the baseline. That's like the bare bones, the walls, the floor plan. Cool, I've got a house. Now let me go get creative. So in my neighborhood, there's a garden side model, and there's 52 homes, and I think 40 of us chose the same model. <laughs> and so I had a 4th of July party at my house with like probably 20 neighbors. I said, this is cool because every one of you know where the bathroom is at. <laughs> <laughs> Yet it all looks very, very different because we all put our creativity. Theirs looks nice, mine looks like I have two dogs and three toddlers in it. <laughs> um, so keep in mind this with your business, that you need to earn the right to limit your creativity once you have models that are in place and use the models that are put in place. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If you find yourself getting cute and getting creative, and you actually have no house to put your curtains in, stop picking up curtains and go build your house. Who can describe this guy for me? I don't like this. I keep getting that damn feeling. In addition to Mary Pat, who else knows this? Deb. You're talking about 
constantly going to be growing, growing, growing until you keep hitting a certain number or certain same results. And so it's not to get really uncomfortable that or get coaching or something to make you uncomfortable or you can actually break through or create something that is going to help you go to the next level. And then once that you do, you do need everybody else's help. You can't do it alone. Then you, that becomes your new floor and then you find that you're going to just continue growing from that point. Awesome. Well said. And we mentioned before that most of us in this room would like to do better than we did last year. Most of us, if we had your best year ever, would like to never go below that ever again. And so your old ceiling now became your new floor. See how that works? There's a sixth personal perspective. This is one of the six. What does this describe? E to P. Moving from entrepreneurial to purposeful. Entrepreneurial is a synonym for your natural ability. Some people in this room are very gifted and you came off the bat in real estate and you're like, well, this is easy. I got it. Because you're a networker, you're just a busybody, you can go out there and just kiss babies and shake hands and love puppies and people want to hire you because of that. And yet, that natural ability that some of you might rely on or are still relying on or have relied on will get you to a certain point before it gets really messy and before you just kind of hit this plateau. Then you've got a choice. Stay there, rinse and repeat. And a lot of people make a really good living doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. You know, I've hired probably 750 agents. And when I hear people, I've been licensed for 25 years. And I'm looking going, you've done the same thing for the last 24. And they make a good living and that's their right and that's and there's no sweet keep it up right yeah you haven't been licensed 24 years you've been licensed one time 24 times one year 24 times and that's just going hey i'm good you are going to make me cry <laughs> <laughs> i don't know who that was <laughs> she's only 27 years old she didn't license 24 years. And so, how many of you feel like you're at some ceiling right now in your business? You're stuck. Get headaches. Anyone watch Smallfoot? It's on HBO right now. Fun movie. Kids. Well, in Smallfoot, yeah, one of the one of the Yoda Yetis, he has to put himself in a slingshot and hit a gong across the city to wake up the sun. And he used to be this tall, but he's just he's flattened out now. And I was like, my height, like flat out. It's Dan DeVito's voice. And he's just, you keep hitting it, you keep hitting it. So you have to identify like, what is my ceiling I'm hitting and what models do I need to implement or improve or improve again. And what happens when you hit a ceiling and then you implement some models? What happens to your business? It grows. It grows. Not yet. Where's the arrow go? Well, yeah. the models after foundational models? Well, it goes through and then, oh, ceiling! Oh, you, step you step back to launch. You step back a little bit. You step back a little bit. And so, one of the most common ones that, that you feel this is a solo agent hiring an assistant. Okay? You can only just do so much by yourself. Then you hire an assistant. Most of the time, the assistant is not the turnkey, welcome day one, you have solved all my problems, are they? They are, oh my gosh, I could do this better without you. Now I have to not only pay you, I've got a training to do it, and I can do it faster myself. And it's actually slowing me down and cost me money. And so when people aren't prepared or aware of that, they might just get about right here and go, this assistant thing doesn't work, I'm bailing, and naturally get back to here. Or all of a sudden, and when it's done well, that like day 90 to 120, magic starts happening, and break through it. This could be for scripts. How many of you say, I don't like scripts, it doesn't sound like me. Who's ever said that? Not now, none of you have ever said that now. <laughs> yes, I would. But sometimes, <laughs> right? And all this is, is going, this is what I do off of me winging it. You ask me to implement some scripts, it doesn't sound like me, and I'm converting less. Yet if you could spend some time and interpret those, and internalize those, and customize those, I wonder if you would break through. So any model you implement is gonna, it's gonna stink for the first 30, 60, maybe 90 days, and if you believe in it, and it's the right thing for you, and it's the right prescription for whatever your pain you're feeling, trust is going to be pushed through. 
That makes sense? <laughs> Pop quiz! Oh, she already won it. Move with me to B. You got ahead of myself. No, I asked. You answered. So we're good. Okay, so we start with the end in mind. So here's the truth. They talk about two different uh, Mount Whitney and Mount Everest. I've got different than you guys. You have a student manual, which is much less. Mine is deeper in here. Uh, is page four where you're on right now? This is page four. Okay. And you're probably still there. Anyway. This is more of just conversation. I've got your tab back here so I can always reference it. Get on. I'm reading off of this. I want to see the mountains. The mountains. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, you have mountains. What page? Yeah, that's page four. Yeah, page four. Okay. Mountains. I don't know. I was like, I don't know. I don't have a page four. I have three to five. Yeah, we're missing page four. We're missing page six. You're missing every even page. Who has one that has even pages? Every even page. No, I don't. Yeah. I told you you're just like. Hands up if you're missing even pages. Okay, we need 55 of them. I'm It shouldn't be thick, it should be front and back. So it should be the same amount of pages. No, where's this little thicker? She was a candidate. Okay. I'm the odd friend. Well, it's right here, so we're going to power through it. It's okay. It's right. all audible now. Here's where start with the end in mind comes in. Mount Whitney is 4,400 meters, 15,000 feet. Mount Everest is 29,000 feet. If you set your path towards climbing Mount Everest and only get halfway up, you will still be in the top 0.1% of the highest mountaintops in the world. And so when you start with the end in mind, it actually is intended to be way bigger than you might even desire or think because the purpose of the goal, this is right from Gary Keller, is not to achieve it. Doesn't that sound strange? Right? It's a little weird. So what are your thoughts around that? No, it's good. It, it always keeps you driving and harder and farther. It's like the, the horse with the carrot, always chasing the carrot that's on a fishing line that's always going to be one step ahead of you. Yeah. It's, it's to drive you. It's to drive yeah. you yeah. forward yeah. with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had my coaching call on Tuesday, and I've, I've done I've had a really good month, and everything that I set out to do, uh, quick background, I started January 1 with a partner. She and I, in May, said it's not working out, so pretty much June 1st, I'm solo. And so the goal was, all right, from June 1 to December 31, pose 26. That's what we're doing. And in the last two weeks, I put six on the escrow. She goes, okay, so cool, so we got to go bigger. Because 26 was big and it was driving me. Yeah, she's going, and you're, you're kind of eating the carrot. If you're the horse, you're, you're eating the carrot right now. So now what? Don't leave the foot off. Yeah. It, and it's, it's, it's extend the goal out. Yeah. It's extend the goal out and go even further and go even further. So keep that in mind that if your goal doesn't kind of make you throw up in your mouth, consider going bigger. Now, it can't be so big that I have no clue how to do it. And I believe that we can all probably even double our goal and create a plan that says, I can do this plan. We just don't always do that. So this is a mindset, this is a thinking thing. As you think about your goal, if it looks too easy once you break it down, then consider going to Mount Everest even though you only have a desire for Mount Whitney. Because if you aim for Everest, you'll probably absolutely conquer it. Make sense? Yeah, because if your goal is here and this is easy, and it's easy and you stop. But if your goal is up here and you get this far, you can beat where you would have under Lloyd Scott. You might not have that goal, but you shattered yeah. that goal. And it's kind of like the Lucy Charlie Brown. Like right when you think you're about to hit it, phew, it goes away, we set the goal. And, and she texted me because when we started, I was dipping into reserves. I was sweating a little bit. I got three kids in preschool. And she says, we've shifted a lot from a surviving conversation Thank you. to a thriving. What's the difference in a surviving conversation to a thriving conversation? Oh. What does that sound like? What's a surviving, surviving conversation? Surviving is, is living paycheck to paycheck in job world. 
it's it's spending the next commission and, and before you get it and holding your breath. Whereas thriving is putting things in saving, paying things off, you know, investing. It's kind of like you're no longer, well, and she says working for money. So this is an excerpt from the MRA book that Gary Keller talks about with his friend. So friend, when I look at your business goals, I have to ask Gary, why do you want all of that money? Gary says, what do you mean want all that money? I don't. He says, then why do you set all those goals to get it? It sure looks like you want it. Gary says, no, friend, no offense, but I don't work for money. You do. The friend says, that's not true. He says, sure it is. Because when you have enough money, you stop working. Well, what do you mean? I mean, the amount of effort you put out at work is directly related to the amount of money you're getting paid. You appear to know exactly how much money you want to make, and when you make it, you stop working. You work for money. For instance, I never thought of it that way. Gary says, well, try thinking of it that way for a moment. Then go a little further. Now you say you have everything you need, but it appears that you may feel you could have accomplished a little more at this point in your career, right? The friend says, Gary, you know I hate it when you do the tough love thing with me. <laughs> Gary says, well, he goes, all right, you're right. Why do you think that is? Maybe your focus on money is holding you back. The friend says, but I do need a certain amount of money. Gary says, we all do. Try looking at it this way. I also need a certain amount of money. But the difference is I've never worked for money. Never, never even really thought about it. When I wake up in the morning, my big goal is my very best, to be my very best and grow as much as possible. Any money I've made is simply a byproduct of my constant pursuit of growth. That's why I set big goals and work so hard. I thought it was a pretty relevant conversation that says, are we working for money? Or are we working to be our best future potential? <laughs> that struck a chord. No, I know. Okay, so Jeff. World domination, <laughs> right? Owning still one. Yeah. Owning still one. Yeah. Yeah. I also feel... If you're doing, and we do that a lot, if you're doing what you really enjoy doing, then it doesn't feel like work. And so using that same mentality, getting yourself involved in some way of prospecting that you already love to do, whether it's sports or kids or open houses, I don't care. You know, you just kind of figure out what makes you tick because if you can go to work thinking that I don't care, I'll do this anyway, whether I get paid or not, that's when you find that you're going to end up making more money because you're not stressed. Which is a hard thing to grasp when you're broke. I understand. Yeah, that's why no, I'm, I'm agreeing with each other. That's what we you know. know. Each other. Think about Rachel. Rachel is fine, but her, her numbers aren't where they want to be. Her growth is going to be to reach the numbers, but she's financially probably fine. It's the same as last year. So the challenge isn't the making the money. The challenge and the reward is finding yourself growing, knowing you can achieve. We set number goals, but the number goals don't have to be money. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's sort of just a tracking device. So... Yes, I would make a million dollars, but it's really the journey to get there and the, the lessons along the way that make you grow, that and what bring you the business it? as a byproduct and bring, bring you the money as a byproduct. I think it's the okay for a million dollars. So how do we <laughs> But you're, 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 you're not satisfied because you know you have more in you to give, and, and it's not, and I, and, I'm not. I understand. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying you're doing great, and most of us would love to be doing what you're doing too. But you're not satisfied because you know there's more out there, and there's more potential, there's more growth, and the numbers just the the numbers just the number. It's just it's the direction for the growth and yeah. everything to go towards. And and I experienced the transition and shift, and she let me aware of it. It's one of the great things having a coach, because my conversations with her January to May. Or how much do I need to make so I no longer have to dip in my savings? Or how much are my monthly bills? And therefore, I was working to do what? Pay to pay my bills. What was I working for? Money. money. And now I've, I've, I've been blessed with a good couple of months, and I've got the money flowing in. I'm no longer worried about paying the bills. I'm still tracking it with a question of going, so what kind of assistant am I going to get? Full-time, part-time, and how much? And when someone says, how much GCI are you done? I don't know, I track units. Yet I used to track GCI when I didn't have it, right? Mm -hmm. And so it is, it's, it's a shift in thinking. It's, it's not something you walk away and go, cool, I'll think that way now. You've, you've got to learn how to think that way by your programming. Be aware of it though, if you're thinking about 
how much do I need to get by to survive? Then you're kind of going for Mount Whitney. It's creating yourself a limit too. That's what I'm saying. You're, you're only gonna get halfway up Mount Everest if you're just getting there, how much do I need to survive? And when you can show up doing the right things, all of a sudden you blow past Mount Whitney, you go, I'm sweet. I'm on my way to Mount Everest. I didn't realize it. Does this make sense? So if you find yourself thinking about survival or paying bills, that thinking is holding you back. All right, let's talk about some myths. Uh, I on page five. You guys have odd numbers, so we're going to go there. <laughs> We're not going to go deep, deep here because it's worth some of what we're going to trim. So you can't do it. Bold. Anyone can do it because it's being done in this market. You make your own if, if someone's doing it, especially in this market, in this city, in this office, it's not about how good you are because of this chart that says models. It's about are you doing the right things every day and over time. So until you try, you don't know what you can or can't do. Uh, another one, it can't be done in my market. So maybe no one is doing it in this market, but they're doing it in another market. Well, go figure out what you've got to shift. Go take the same models and figure out, because frankly, if someone in Minnesota, in Alaska, can sell 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 million a year, in Alaska, it's snowing and dark for nine months of the year we live in florida right we can we can be out in our shorts in december showing property so if anything our market gives us an edge up against the competitors across the u.s so absolutely can be done on this market though the difference in this market might be oh thank you i have two things of chicken now yeah, yeah gary can do something hers in a cup it was disguised i'll probably eat them yeah. <laughs> not embarrassed when you have dad bod 3.0, you just kind of keep eating. <laughs> it would take too much time and effort. Anyone ever felt like this? Too much time, too much effort. When I asked who would like to gross a million, half of the hands went up. Yet if you could do it off of five transactions and one customer, and you grossed a million, you know, oh, that, that sounds fun then. <laughs> if I asked that question, how many of you like to gross a million dollars off one customer over five transactions? Every hand goes up. What's the difference? The time and the effort that you, you thought associated yourself with it, right? And so it would take too much time and effort. Some of you going, I'm gonna limit my mountain because I don't wanna trade the time and effort. Well, what if you didn't have to? What if you could figure out a way to do both? And so take that out of your thinking of when you see something that you would love to have, and yet there's obstacles in the way and you're just going, I can't do it. I can't do it in this market. It'll take too much time to go do that. That's a myth that's holding you back. Be aware of it and think a little bit differently. It's too risky. I'll lose money. Has this ever showed up in someone's head? In someone's action? Can you give me a for example? For instance? Yes, ma'am? Took me 15 years to actually do this. Because of the fear. To, to quit the job and become a realtor. Yes. You 10 out of 9 crazy person. I know. Not anymore. This is too risky. You'll lose money. Maybe certain investments. Maybe certain leverage. Maybe, I mean, there's some high-end stuff you could do even with a single listing. Maybe it's high-end photography, your drone, or paying for staging. And you're going, it's going to cost me 1500 bucks to stage this house. It's too risky because what if I don't recoup that? And maybe you shouldn't. And maybe you should. I'm not saying that everyone should go stage at one of the houses. Yet, really evaluate it because everything has an ROI. And in real estate, if we think about it, we should be getting anywhere from, I'd say if you can get a five to one return on your lead gen, that's pretty solid, right? In a lot of areas, you can get 10 and 20 and 30 to one when you work and connected. If you work strictly online, you're probably getting a two or three to one, which is still pretty cool. If I give, if you give me a dollar and I give you three back, are you okay with that? How many of you are okay with that? How many dollars will you give me if I always give you three back in every day? One. One, that's it? One a day. Every day, like, keep it on, right? It isn't that a lot of the legion that we have is a direct ROI, if we do the other part of it. Uh, I sponsored a, a 
a wedding venue with a bunch of married engaged couples, and I was a booth vendor there. It all ends about 1200 bucks. My wife and I set up a booth, and we got it. And I had 94 people register about their profile house they want once they get married. Now, it's 2020 and 2021 weddings, but probably 2021, 2022 houses, and then 2027 houses, and half of them get divorced, and you have like two more buys, one more sell. <laughs> Yet, if I'm looking at 1,200, can I get an ROI from that? Only if I do the job between now and then. I've got Excel spreadsheets over my computer right now, and so now they just mail it to me, and I've got to go follow up, eight by eight, 36 touch. When you have the right ROI, it's not risky. It's calculated strategic, and it will help you grow. My clients will only work with me. Remember, believe that? I believe that. Yeah. No. <laughs> Once upon a time, you might have. Because it's common for people who, especially if your business is, is predominantly your sphere of influence, they love you and they call you because you did a great job for them. And no, Cynthia, I want you because you're the best. And then, like over the last two, three, five, ten years, your database and conditioning that only you can help me and serve me. So it's no wonder. Yet they don't only want to work with you; they want to work with what you stand for. So if you hire a bunch of yahoos that don't have the same standards and customer service and work ethic as you do, yeah, you're going to lose some business. If you can hire people who are actually better than you, you're gonna gain more business, or at least equal. So Mariana, you came over a year and a half ago, single mm -hmm. agent. Yep. Now you've got the Mortel, he changed your team name to the, uh, what was it? Squad. 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 Mortel Squad. Squad. <laughs> He's got branding already working. Mortel Squad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you've now surrounded yourself with people, and Joey's probably better than you at a lot of stuff that you can get. Absolutely. Right? And now you're getting, instead of closing three and four months, if you don't close five, it's a bad month. Correct. It's a ceiling you broke through. Mm -hmm. So good job releasing that. And good job, Joe, making her better. A myth, having a goal and not fulfilling it is a negative thing. We already kind of talked about this a little bit. But having a goal and not trying to achieve it is negative. Change your perspective on failure, not trying is the failure. Failing is you progressing. Succeeding is about trying, and whenever you try, you either succeed or you learn. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Let's give Philip a hand. All right. At any point you need it, help yourself at the Chick fil A buffet. Because we're not going to take breaks. So if you need to go potty your chicken or cell phone, just do it. come back at the end. What's that? Okay, perfect. It's not necessary, I don't need it. No, what is it? Uh, there's something magical when you think big and try to achieve it. Because motivation is important to everyone and it affects many parts of our lives every single day. Don't sabotage your performance. Think big. Then break a big goal to smaller achievable goals. All of our behaviors, actions, thoughts, beliefs are influenced by our inner drive to succeed. Okay, so here's the myth from the fanning bowl. I listened to the book on tape, which is why I'm a myth. Myth in the fanning. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was my thunderstick. Which ones did you guys <laughs> grab? <laughs> my thunderstick. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. I love it. I'm gonna start using that. My thunderstanding. <laughs> Which ones are you guys grappling with? Circle it, underline it, highlight it. Yep, page five. Which ones are you grappling with? Be aware of it. If you're aware of it, you can start changing it. You have clarity, and clarity is how long. All right. You're thinking with a big why. You're thinking with big models and big goals. Those are the two foundations right now. How many of you need help with your big why? We have no clue. Let me start this. When I say your big why, keep your hand up. You're going. Well, what the heck is he talking about? No, 
to like, what does he mean, big why? Okay, perfect. So big why is that, that inner thing that makes you get up in the morning and work when you don't have a boss, when you don't have a schedule, you don't have a time, you are an independent contractor, and something is motivating you enough to get up and do what you're gonna do, probably a lot of ways what's not comfortable for you to do every day. That is what would be a big why of going, what's the point? When we have jobs with W-2, the ultimate big why is I gotta pay my bills and, and have security for my family, right? We all work for money, don't we? Right. When, when people say I don't work for money, they're like, cool, then just I'm not gonna pay you then for this? Well, they gotta pay me. Okay, well, you work for money, hopefully you also love what you do while you receive money. That would be the opposite. Yeah, we all work for money. So the big why is gonna go, What's the motivating thing that's going to keep me driving faster when I want to quit and I want to give up and I want to sleep in and I want to go home and I want to not pick up the phone and I want to not work on that open house on Saturday? What keeps you going? That's your big why. Now, the question is, how many of you need help with your big why? What is my big why? What is going to get me motivated to get up and do and do and do? but I don't want to feel like it, and I'm sick, and I'm tired, and I'm scared, and I'm afraid, and I like rejection, and I don't understand it. So how can you guys get a big why? Who's gotten one that they can help share their their journey of how they received a big why? Ariana, Blair? Um, presently, my big why is for my husband to retire. And, um, well, it's been my big why for about a year now, and so that's what I work for, so when I get off and I, you know, I say, okay, I, I, you know, if I do those seven or if I plan those seven closings a month or if I plan to move it up to nine, how much sooner can he retire? And that, that's a big why. But I also find, like, some of my why is changing because now, like, that's a possibility, so more things have come into my life. Like, like if I don't feel like lead generating, then I, like, hiring Joey gave me more of a big why because now I have to pay him. My my success is his success, and having other people on the team to lead generate for means you know it's kind of like that responsibility for another for me. Kind of it's going from job. single to married, and then married to parenthood, right? Yeah. All of a sudden, the things you do in your life aren't always about you anymore. Right. It's about someone else. That's that's the experience you're feeling as you have a team. Because if you're solo and you don't want to do your job then you can figure out how to survive by that. Yet if you're a team and they're counting on you and you don't do it, you're affecting their life. Exactly. So part of the big, you guys see the big why go hire system. <laughs> They'll push you. I promise. And even if you can only afford to pay him for 60 days, 30 days, tell them that. They're like, all right, here's, I'm gonna pay you in advance. There's a check, and by the way, I'm broke. <laughs> so in 30 days, you can go cash this thing and if I don't have any more money to pay you, then we're done. And here's how we're gonna go. That's what Ben Kenny did. So ben Kenny, when he started, what's that? Seriously, he did that? Mm -hmm. He had 90 days. Huh. He hired his assistant. He says, okay, here's the deal. I can afford to pay you for 90 days. If, if we don't get here, I can't afford to pay you. And frankly, if we don't get here, I shouldn't keep paying you because you didn't affect anything. And we're gonna play the game every 90 days. And I'm gonna make sure that every 90 days, I'm gonna get, keep being able to pay you. And then over time, he's able to give her raises. And the fun story is, I think she makes 12 bucks an hour. And this was probably eight years ago. And then as he started doing more, he asked her a question. Do you want to get a raise in your base or do you want to get a bonus off of every piece? What'd she say? Bonus. Oh yeah, because now she's going, I'm attached. Now she all of a sudden created no ceiling. She still gets bonus for every piece. She still works for Ben. She makes a quarter million dollars a year. Oh, wow. At 12 bucks an hour. <laughs> wow. That's, that's, right? But he essentially said, we're in this together. If I can't succeed, we don't succeed. Right? So that was one. Other motivation, when you think about your big why, it is family. Yet it's got to be something deeper or more. You have to attach it to what about. You have to kind of get dark and gloomy of what if. My wife, without her income right now, we would be financially challenged. So God forbid something happened to her position where either A, went away, or B, she was no longer able to do it. <coughs> That's a big why when you think about it about doomsday. What if 
your boys get an amazing opportunity and it includes going to Harvard Medical School at $100,000 a year for five years? Are you going to be the mom that says, sorry, I, I didn't financially set up to, to do this? <laughs> but that, that's the kind of thing that can say, what is the motivation pushing thing? And it's not something we're going to get today. It's just understanding what is the power behind it. And whatever it is, keep it in front of you, keep it in the forefront, because it will be that motivator. It'll be that character. That's actually my difficulty, because I have a big why, but it's long term, so I need little whys along mm -hmm. the way. So, and that's where I think. And you had your little why, just paid off your work last year. That was two years, yeah, but that was one why. But my big why is to, you know, the kids can afford to put me in a nursing home if they have to, because I see, no, because I see my sister in law struggling with my mother in law. and in home care and I don't want that to happen. But you will not be a financial burden on your kids. Correct. Yeah. But that is hopefully, God forbid, you know, like another 50 years away, or maybe 40. Okay. Um, but we don't know. Uh, uh, true. You never, I could get hit tomorrow and be whatever. 